Good morning, professors. I'm Alex, and standing beside here is my partner, Luke. Today, I'm glad to present to you our findings on the generalized tic-tac-toe. So I believe the rules of tic-tac-toe are very easy. Two players play on a three times three board using different symbols, for example, crosses and knots. In each turn of a player, he or she places one of his or her symbols on an unoccupied square with the aim of achieving a three in a row. So now, here's a typical tic-tac-toe game. As you can see, none of the players achieves a three in a row. Therefore, the game ends in a draw. Here's the first step of our generalization by introducing the parameters m, n, and k. Now the game is played on an m times n board with the aim of achieving a k in a row. Note that in the later part of the presentation, we'll use black stones for player one and white stones for player two. So we may call them black and white respectively. The second step is to introduce two more parameters, p and q. So in the first turn of, the, uh, of black, he places a, p, a total of q stones on the board, and each subsequent turn involves p stones. So here's an example. As you can see here, black wins, because he's achieved a four in a row. So now we introduce the notations. The columns are labeled with letters, and the rows are labeled with numbers. So the game we have seen just now may be annotated like this. So here's a useful theorem to start with. If P is smaller than or equal to Q, then the, uh, white does not have a forced win. Because if white does have a forced win, then black can steal his or her strategy. So we have employed two methods in total for investigating the generalized tic-tac-toe namely exhaustion and the pairing strategy. Exhaustion is simple. We just try all possibilities of the moves. And although it might, must work for all cases, it may take a tremendous amount of time, even for computers, to complete the analysis. So we can improve the exhaustion by transposition, by symmetry, or by evaluation of position. So here are the results we have obtained using exhaustion. First of all, we can consider a four times three sub rectangle here. And black, by playing only inside this rectangle, can manage a win by following this line. Of course, white can, uh, can respond with A2 or D2, but it doesn't matter. So here, black wins easily. Here's another of our results, and we only show one line here due to time constraints. Using exhaustion and the optimization mentioned before, we have also obtained some other results, but again, we can't show it here due to time constraints. And the second method we've used is pairing strategy. It is quite different because it is not used to evaluate the game. Instead, it is used by whites to manage a forced draw against black. It can only be used when p equals q equals 1. As we have seen in the previous theorem, white cannot manage a win, so a draw would be the best. Step one of the algorithm. When white knows the board configuration, he or she pairs some of the squares on the board with each other, with the aim of achieving a set of pair squares in every k in a row. White can use horizontal, vertical, or diagonal pairing. Step two is the actual game. It's how black, uh, white responds with every black move. So if black places in this case, then you can see that C3 is paired with A3. So white should be respond with A3. The second case, if the pair square is already occupied, then white is free to place his or her square at her stone anywhere. And now the, first, the third case. If black places his or her stone on an unpaired square, then white again can be free to place his or her stone anywhere. I don't understand the notation. How does the pairing work? I mean. uh, the horizontal lines indicate the horizontal pairing. 
For example, you can see A3 and C3, uh, they are horizontal lines there. And then it means that A3 is paired with C3. And now the calculations. We want to find that the minimum number of pair squares needed to, to over add to complete all K in the rows. So greedy algorithm is used. When we consider a row, a column, or a diagonal, we consider all the K in the rows. And we select the right modes, pair. For example, for the row A1 to F1, we consider A1 to D1 first. And then we can see that there's no paired squares here. So we pair up C1 and D1, and we move on. So using the greedy algorithm, we can see that the number of k in the rows is L minus k plus 1. And here we obtain that for one, for one line of length L, the least number of paired squares is as shown. Here's the first theorem. Basically, the left-hand side is the total number of squares on the board. And right-hand side is the least number of pairing squares needed. So of course, left-hand side has to be larger than or equal to right-hand side, so that white can complete the, the pairing. We consider the horizontal, vertical, and diagonal lines to obtain the results. So uh, to start with, we have found this uh, beautiful periodic pattern, which states that on any board size, even infinitely large board, if the players are playing to achieve a nine in a row, white can always manage a draw. Inspired by this, we try to obtain our own results. For example, if the game is played on a K times K board, a K in a row game is always a draw for white. So here's our proof. For cases k equals 3 or k equals 4, we obtained them by exhaustion. And here is the pairing pattern for k equals 5. In fact, for larger values of k, we have an algorithm to generate the pairing patterns. Here are the horizontal pairing lines, the vertical ones, and then the diagonal ones. Similar pairing patterns can be used for larger values of k. So concluding the results, we have that the KKK11 game is a forced draw if k is larger than or equal to 3. So here, uh, the other results we have obtained using similar methods by using the theorem to eliminate smaller values of k and then to produce a general pairing pattern for larger values. Here's another case we've worked on. And last, if n is smaller than k, then we also have this result stating that for k larger than or equal to 3, white can manage a draw using only horizontal pairing. So to conclude, we have investigated the generalized tic-tac-toe using two different methods, namely exhaustion and the pairing strategy. For exhaustion, it can be used to evaluate basically every single game, and we can know its results under perfect play. However, it can be very complicated. As for pairing strategy, it has its limitations, but it's less complicated and more fun. Uh, other than the results we have stated above, we have also investigated the 94411 game. We want to show that it is a forced draw because we found that one of the so called winning lines, in fact, can lead to a draw. We have also tried other responses by white, um, I mean by black, but it seems that none of the, none of the responses can give black the win. Here are the other suggestions for further research, but we haven't worked on that, actually. So this is the end of my presentation. Thank you.